knowing that the very fabric of the whole entire universe or creation of this realm sprang forth from his words inspires me to become masterful with mine. Yeah. And in scripture, it talks about how life and death is in the power of the tongue and how from the heart, the mouth overflows. Yeah. And I believe that your heart and your lips are so connected. Mm. And the way in which you communicate with people, your heart springs forth on them. Mm -hmm. And in that connection, you are also building things Mm. in people and around people. Mm. And that's what the world needs. Mm. Yo, it's good. Welcome to the Mo Boy. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I was still, you know, I had just finished my sentence. I'm for sure keeping this in. <laughs> Yo, it's good. Welcome to the Mo Mori Podcast. I'm Tavery Mori. I'm Zandy Mori. And this is the Mo Mori Podcast. I'm not going to do it like that. Mori. Huh? Mori. You can keep it. That's not embarrassing to me. People don't embarrass. I can't get embarrassed. That's good. Let me get some of that. Mmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of Mori, it's our anniversary today. Four years of... Maury. Four years of Maury. And more to come. And more Maury to come. <laughs> we got at least 96 more years. Happy anniversary, babe. Happy anniversary, Z. Then he actually got me this. All right, let me... Ah, this is a little cool. She has man. taste. She got a taste. Okay. The best taste in men, obviously. I think so. Blushing? A little bit. <laughs> I'm red like the shirt. Um, we figured, just because it's on our mind, obviously today we have been celebrating all day the way that we do. Casual, mm-hmm. intentional time together. Slash parenting. <laughs> like it's just different when you have a kid. But I was like, we should just talk about our wedding. Facts. The wedding day. Let's do it. So interesting because that was COVID year. So the whole world yeah, was shut down. And we had to navigate a lot leading up to the actual wedding day. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, I think everybody has unspoken expectations around a lot of big moments in life, whether Mm -hmm. that be when I'm 16, I'm gonna gonna get a car and you don't get a car, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or, you know, when I get married, it's gonna be like this. When I have a wedding, it's gonna be like this. Mm -hmm. And then whether that's like necessarily vocalized, I think because there's so much media around weddings and it's a huge business. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with desiring mm. your you kind of what you see, and I think that people have monopolized on mm. on that. Or anyway. capital like capitalized on it and made it a business. Yeah. yeah, and even distorted like the perception of what it actually is. Where like people, a wedding. Yeah, like I'm not to say that weddings are important, but like the wedding becomes bigger than the marriage. For sure. That's why there's so many like very entertaining TV shows about bridezillas <laughs> and things like that. Or even uh, Love Is Blind, right? Because that's like less about the wedding. That's less about the wedding. Yeah. That's one episode. Not for real. But I'm, that's like the like when you're trying to see though, right? Because it's decision day, not because I'm like, what did they do at their wedding? Mm. You know what I mean? I'm still a rookie in the. But there are plenty of shows. TLC. Uh huh. Kind of has a lot of them. Yeah. Married at first sight. Is that? No, that's about the marriage. The, that's the first episode of Married at First Sight. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even, I don't know, like, Say Yes to the Dress. Have okay. you ever heard of that? No. Nah. It's when... No, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Okay. Though. Well, yeah. So things like that. That's, mm. like, directly about the wedding, mm. not necessarily about the marriage. Mm-hmm. Those other two shows are more about the relationships. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um... Anyway, I say that to say we also had our own expectations to navigate Mm -hmm. in that. And then on top of that, navigating COVID and a pandemic, we we um, eventually landed on it was going to be the two of us and Mm -hmm. our pastor. Mm -hmm. And then um, we were able to, by the grace of God, afford the venue that we had. Um, And just through community, like we were we were just. Yeah, so anyway, I, we were talking about the wedding day, and I remember journaling that morning. Mm-hmm. So I lived with my parents until we got married. So I woke up. We had just gotten home from, like, a family vacation. Mm-hmm. And I remember being on the vacation, like, wearing hats the whole time because I didn't want to get too tan. 
so my makeup would still match <laughs> so that the photos would come out right, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I would be like in a tent or like play for a while and then like be in a tent and like or be under a hat or something like that. So I didn't get too tan. And then got home, journaled. I don't even know what journal I was in. I would like to read it, but it was like I'm getting married today. Mm-hmm. And did we communicate at all? I think so, like a little bit. Because I know me. I had to pick up a rental car because then we drove to Florida. Mm. That day? The next morning? Or? I don't remember. I think it was the that next night. day. The next day. It wasn't that night. Okay. I don't think so. Because we came home. In your truck. Or in that rental car. Okay. And Kaneen and all of them yeah. made the house super yeah, yeah. nice. That was dope. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll, we'll get to that. So we had... Shout out to Kaneen and Miriam. Yeah. Great. I was thinking because I also asked my friend Jess Rogers to do something. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being... I think Carly was there too. Oh, cool. And I think they all watched the ceremony at our house. Oh. Yeah. That's dope. Uh-huh. But... Um, it's very avant-garde. Yeah. Time. I'm like, I don't know that I've thought about that day in a long time. Yeah. Like the actual wedding day. Mm Mm-hmm. Pretty wild. Super. I got ready at the house. I think my older sister, Ashley, did my makeup. My twin sister, Lexi, did my hair. My second oldest sister, Shayna... I don't think she did anything. So shout out to Shane. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she was there. My brother took like photos of kind of me getting ready. And then I still did. I got so, drinks. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like we said earlier, we decided that it was just going to be us and our pastor at the um, ceremony. But I had, because I lived with my family. Obviously, my family was there. So that was sweet. I, I felt seen mm-hmm. by God that that was the thing. Dad, like, walked me down the stairs, mm-hmm. and we have a, we have a picture of us doing the, this, uh-huh. and he's, like, just smiling. It was just sweet. And it was also, like, a somberness in the air, mm-hmm. obviously, for my family and me. Because they weren't going, you know, Mm. it was just like we get ready and then they sent me off. And one of my best friends, Katie Sura, who also was our photographer that day, um, came to the house as well. Kind of took photos of that. And then she drove me out to that location. I think it's Spring Hill, technically. Columbia, maybe. Mm. Like far. It's It's like almost an hour. It's out there for uh, sure. South of us. Um. One thing I do remember, so I get to the uh, venue, and there's, like, the boxes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. And it's, like, letters from all of my people kind of, like, wishing me the best day. And I need to go through those today. I'd love to read them. But um, (laughs) what? I'll be in the studio. (laughs) (laughs) They're sweet. I know, for sure. You don't want to see them? No, I had a box of letters. I do. It's, I know where they are. Why would you want? To, why would you be in the studio? Cause I feel like that's your moment. I'm gonna let you have your moment. I'll let it go. Um, but we read through the letters, and then I remember you texting me like, "I'm ready to see you." Mm. And then we did a first look, and you you can take that. No, you got it. I feel like I was floored when I seen her. To be honest. Yeah. I always am curious about that from a man's perspective Mm -hmm. because do I look different? Because I've seen multiple men with first looks or when they wait until they come down the aisle and it's like a very like emotional response. I think, well, you don't wear a wedding dress every day. Right. So I think that's kind of like the most um, highlighted component of the look. Mm -hmm. And then since you see that, there's also like the awareness that well like if she's in that dress then this means that she's mine for real yeah you know what I mean yeah I think that's really the thing on top of you looking stunning you know what I mean yeah 
So it's it's just like a wave of a lot of emotions. Yeah. Because I think it's diff- it seems to be, and that also might be part of the ploy, but it seems that there's bigger reactions from men than women. Like if I see you in a suit mm-hmm. that day, mm-hmm. I thought you were so handsome. Thanks, but I it, appreciate that. Yeah. But men wear suits all the time. Okay. Like I can wear a suit and go outside right now. And, and nobody be, be like, like cool. yeah. You just can't wear your wedding dress. Right. People are like, oh, you're getting married? No. No, I'm just going to Kroger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can, yeah, I could go to Kroger in a suit. And mm-hmm. People be like, oh, you got off work or he's about to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's and like, it's like not a thing. Yeah. That makes sense. And then we um, did the ceremony. I walked down to the doxology. And then, excuse me, <laughs> the Topa Chica got me. <laughs> <laughs> my childhood friends, um, Andy and Alex, they had they had a video company called Fool's Pajamas. It's rebranded now, and I'm not remembering the name right mm. now, but I do love y'all. Yeah, they did a great <laughs> and job. And they did a great job, so they were able to capture it until all of our family um, could live stream it. Mm-hmm. And that's something we did on our honeymoon was when we went back and like read all the comments. And there were so many people... Um, There's a group of people in there. I believe your auntie was on there. Yeah. Uh, and Toby, mm-hmm. Aunt Nicole, Aunt KK, like so many people, which was sweet too. Like, and that day, though it was just us, it didn't feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like the actual ceremony when we were like exchanging vows and mm-hmm. exchanging rings and all of that, it felt so holy. Like I've never experienced anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. um, Visually, we were in a very beautiful place. That's a fact. Um, but also, like, spiritually and emotionally, that 20 minutes or however long the actual, like, marriage part or ceremony part yeah. was, was, like, void of anything but peace. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just, like, so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, we took communion, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did that there was like a moment of prayer Mm -hmm. there was the vows and then like the first kiss which i i'm not we i was talking about embarrassment earlier i don't get pda is just not my thing i i seen this is actually a very recent zandy be so gung-ho i could talk about anything I could do whatever, and then I'll be like, Zenny, give me a kiss right now. And then she just... I can talk about anything versus, mm-hmm. kid, give me a kiss right now. That's not two different I things. I know, but you just, it's it's <laughs> such an incredible, like, flip. Because you're, not, you're it like... It's not me. You be, like, I'm very in cool, the calm, deep collected. of the deep of somebody's business. He's trying to say I'm cool. Like, business. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. Opening up about anything and everything but a little peck and I on don't the lips. Flip. Huh? What? I was going to say I don't flinch. But you don't gonna, flinch, yeah. but a little peck on the lips is just. I don't know what it, it's not a peck on the, it's not like, like on our wedding day, I wasn't like, this is so embarrassing. Right. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It just feels sometimes inappropriate or something. A kiss? Depending on where we are. Okay. So if like. And the instance you're, <laughs> in the instance you're talking about, we're just sitting amongst all our friends chilling. I know, but the the reason why it was a thing and is because not, people also know that that's a thing for that's you. That's what I'm saying. So, and that's why they're like, do it, do it. I understand that. <laughs> I did. I do it. <laughs> exactly. But what I'm saying is, it may be inappropriate. It's not the right word, but just a little like out of, like maybe out of the moment. Like whatever is happening right now, it feels like it would be a lot for me to just come and like. Give me a kiss casually. Mm-hmm. I said more than a peck. Anything more than a peck, I said. You wouldn't even give me a peck, Z. I wouldn't. See? It's okay, babe. It's okay. What was the point? You just you just ruined my whole story. You know when I brought it up. You were talking about the kiss, first kiss, after communion, all that kind of stuff, prayer. Then you took over with, this, with your story. I just had to let it off real quick. Um, anywho. After that, we walked out to September, because yeah. that's the day. 21st. 21st night of September. Yep. FaceTimed your family. Yeah. Took photos. I just found a video on my phone today, actually, where we drove 
past my family's house. Does that feel familiar? Yeah, on the way back home. I don't remember that I don't at all. That. Yeah. Okay. And they all kind of came outside and waved. Mm. Then we went back to our house where he, my stuff was there, but he was living there mm -hmm. by himself. And then I, that night on, I, I moved in. Mm -hmm. And our friends had like decorated the house. And because we weren't leaving for the honeymoon until the next day. The next day, we should get into the, <laughs> the honeymoon. <laughs> but. That joint? I don't, I don't know if I want to get like that deep into that particular oh, thing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we, have, we have friends pre preparing to get married right now. And we always say, like, nobody leaves that season oh, unscathed. You are going to get, you're going to get tagged. Something is going to happen. You will get tagged. And that's not like, you know, a word curse or anything. No. It's just like the reality of, like, it, life's not perfect. And neither are. I feel like our ceremony, our wedding day was perfect, mm -hmm. but the wedding preparation nor our honeymoon was like, mm -hmm. it was so wild. Yeah. Um, I do. But I do remember, that. do you care if we talk about sex? Sure, I guess. Well, I'm just saying, so when we got married, I was a virgin. See, you know what I'm saying? Like, won't what? give me a peck, but yeah, right, go ahead. <laughs> I, here, I'll give you a peck. <laughs> Don't do too much. See? No, I'm just saying. Zenny, do just much. give me a kiss. Okay. <laughs> now you have to talk about what I'm talking about. All right. Don't say it like that. All right. <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> he gets so it's, nervous it's, about stuff. It's light work. <laughs> so I do remember we had like this great food. There was steak, yeah. this great salad, I think like potatoes. Yeah. I was so nervous. Like fingerling potatoes? Yeah. I was so nervous. Obviously. We actually need to go pull up on Kanine and them. We haven't, I don't even know if they've ever met Trial. They have. Oh, okay. With me. Nice. Sorry. It's all good. But yeah, they've been on the road a lot. Yeah. Shout out to the Lone Bellow. Oh. They're actually just at, whatchamacallit? The Scrammerhorn? Yeah, yeah, with like a symphony. I saw that. Crazy. Um, sweet people. Mm -hmm. What was I saying? You were talking about eating. Oh, the food. Meat. Yeah. And I couldn't, I barely could eat. I remember <laughs> taking like a couple bites, you know what I mean? And it was so fire. Like she's an amazing cook and baker. Like went to school overseas to learn how to bake. So Paris. I'm just giving you guys the caliber of like food that we had in front of us was not just like some takeout. Nah. Very well prepared. We hadn't really Though eaten. we did go to Sonic's after. But we didn't, did I, I don't remember eating. I thought I just got a, a got lime. We got drink. Yeah. I should have got the tater tots. I want tater tots right now. I can make that move. Okay, thank you. Um, it's the honeymoon. I'm uh, not the honeymoon anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous about what was to come <laughs> that I could not focus on the meal. I was like, what do I do? Like, do I need to initiate? Do I, like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And so I just want to say to any woman who's getting married and you got, and you got some jitters, it's totally fine. It all works out. It'll figure itself and out. And it figured itself out, and it was great. It was fine. But then I just remember we ate, we went to bed, and then we woke up really early the next morning to drive. To Florida. 12 hours or something. I don't remember what part of Florida we were. Amelia Islands. It was close to Jacksonville. Yeah, so it's far from Nashville. And over the course of that whole, I think we were only gone for like four days because my twin sister also was getting married. Oh, yeah. Dang, uh, I forgot about that. A couple weeks after we did. Mm -hmm. And so she had her bachelorette party, which I had to make it back for. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there was a lot of like kind of emotional opportunities for us. There was... Um, unexpected circumstances when we got to the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And then I was getting called from home that there was like tragedy happening back home in my like close friend circle. And then there was um, kind of like a quick deadline because I needed to go back and like celebrate my sister. And all of this is kind of just feeding into what I'm saying about the expectation versus reality. Mm -hmm. And I think what probably felt like disappointments in those circumstances actually I think were beautiful lessons for us as we launched into a marriage about like how to stay connected, how to talk through things, how to work through disappointment. And obviously that's not something you necessarily want to happen on a honeymoon. Yeah. But at the same time, looking from that moment now, four years later, it gave us some tools mm -hmm. that have been very helpful yeah. in our 
in our last four years mm -hmm. that have been full of disappointment, mm -hmm. full of un unexpected circumstances, mm -hmm. more tragedy, mm -hmm. you know, loss. And mm -hmm. um, so I think... That's life, you know what I mean? Like It is. And I think maybe that's the thing that people get, I guess, thrown for a curveball is they think that because these very special monumental moments are happening that life just kind of gets put on pause yeah and it's like nah bro like no it's still rolling yeah you know what i mean because yeah. i don't necessarily see a difference in what we experience life-wise like granted there's seasons where things are more intense than others but the general experience of like yo life is throwing curves it's kind of like yeah it just doesn't stop you know what i mean no but that is disappointing. Oh, absolutely. I think that, I think that it's just getting hit in the heart at all, let alone in a season that yeah. you kind of look forward to. Yeah. But I'm thankful because who you were, I saw how you responded to situations like then to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. And then over the last four years, how you responded, it's all been consistent. Mm -hmm. Like it, we never, I guess I can't say never, but to the best of our ability, don't turn on each other mm -hmm. and don't make each other the disappointment when we're walking through a disappointing thing. Right. And I have, was wake, I woke up today and like wrote him a card and I was just like so thankful because I realized how rare it is to uh, be married to someone who is willing to like do the work to have a better life. Mm. And I'm not talking about monetarily or the kind of house we live in or anything like that. Mm. But, excuse me. But, the, um, get you. to like have peace mm -hmm. in a, in a relationship mm -hmm. and not letting, like you were saying, the life of it all, mm -hmm define the season mm -hmm. but rather like the peace of god define the season right and we haven't done it perfectly no way but i will say you tavier as a husband like you've led really well in that thank you Z. and you have always been a safe place to land um as we figure out kind of disappointing things mm -hmm. and it's funny because when you actually feel the disappointment of the season, you do get back to joy mm -hmm. and you can feel sad for what maybe was lost, but at the mm -hmm. same time, be happy for everything that was gained. Right. Instead of just like numbing everything and being like, whatever, I'm not dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, so in our whole wedding day, mm -hmm. wedding season, mm -hmm. it's marked by life, mm -hmm. but it also is marked by God mm -hmm. and everything we gained in that um, I think was a beautiful foundation into where we are now and how we can be at four years and not have one year where we were like, that was hell. Facts. You know, like I just, that was, we, we definitely were on the brink of divorce mm -hmm. and I know God redeems all things. So I'm not even saying that's a, like, if you're there, then I feel bad for you. Facts. I am saying that he also has a way. Yeah. And. And if we like continue to submit to him in that way, mm -hmm. he um, he wants to give us the the best of life, yeah. Which is like including the best of marriage, mm -hmm. laughter and mm -hmm. joy and healthy communication and healthy conflict resolution, mm -hmm. so that we can get back to the life that he has for us. What was that thing? we were speaking about earlier with Shayna as far as the... The glory of God versus the presence of God? The one after that. The salt? Yeah. Um, when we were talking about just like the obedience. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily harping on sin, because I think when, when you harp on sin, you kind of... And I know I'm veering off, but I'm going to... No, no, you're good. Like, when you harp on sin, you're actually not focusing on the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like, the focus is supposed to be on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And yes, like, we are set free from sin because of what he's done for us. But also, like, that's not the only thing he did for us. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think so much of... That was the beginning of it. That was the beginning of yeah. it. But, like, so many people go, and it's like, everything is this, like, sin-based equilibrium mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yo, we're past that. Right. Like, literally, he does not see that. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying, like, go on and just, like... <laughs> go off. Go, 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 <laughs> go sin and all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is, like, I am going to sin today. And I'm going to sin tomorrow because I am in a fallen state. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Although, like, my spirit and soul has been renewed, my flesh is still my flesh. So for me to be... To say the ball-faced lie that I don't sin or that I won't sin, that's an absolute lie. I'm free from sin, absolutely. Now, in that freedom, I have the opportunity and choice to pursue him in his face. And in that pursuing of him in his face, I am then transformed. And in that transformation, there's a dependence and a submittance to his spirit. And in that submittance to his spirit, I'm able to function more and more each and every day in what he's called me to Mm -hmm become or to be or who I actually am, mm-hmm. who, who I was at the foundations of the earth seated with Christ. And I feel when I am living my life in a way that is centered and focused on the face of Jesus and you're living your life in that way, only one thing can happen and that is for fruit to be born. I mm-hmm. suppose that's mm-hmm. what you would say. And I say that because it's not by your work or my work, but by his work. And it's by the grace that we receive through him, by him, and only through him that we're able to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the growth inside of me is just a fruit of that grace. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know and believe that don't harp on like the ugly things that's happening whether it be like your relationship what's happening in your life but focusing on where your heart is and where your heart is that's where you are Mm -hmm. and I just believe it's so powerful when both people in a relationship have their heart in the same place. Mm -hmm. And that's at the feet of Jesus. And in that place, there's nothing but fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's what I've gathered from our years of marriage is that the closer that I am to him, that's the only thing that I'm responsible for. Right. Because he'll never remove himself from me. Right. I can only remove myself from him. Right. And you doing the same thing, like, you can't lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just felt the need to say that when no, you were for saying sure. the, the, just the growth over the years and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I, I just would want people to know that like, it's all found in him. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's literally there. Not no guru, <laughs> not no uh, pop culture or whatever the culture is telling you it's always been there. Yeah. Um, I know that was getting and it's off a little And bit. it's just a choice. It's a choice, like yeah. Like, we do co-labor with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, prayer. Mm-hmm. What are you saying about this? How do I die to the flesh, mm-hmm. love him well? Like, die to the flesh and love him well. You know, like, it's... I think it can sometimes be simplified to, like, just Jesus. Right. And it is. Mm-hmm. But we we fight our selves and what we want to do and our desires, and then it's like, well, I'm, I'm not trying to apologize. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one who did X, Y, and Z. I'm not the one yeah. who. Like that's where we get got most of the time yeah. in the what is the, for the benefit of us mm-hmm. versus what's for the benefit of me. Mm-hmm. What would make me feel better? Right. What would make me look better? Mm-hmm. You know, like so. There's so much wisdom in all that Tavir is saying about just submitting to to Christ. And mm-hmm. when two people are doing that, there's, like, also power, mm-hmm. you know. And it's, like, 
I believe it's the fundamental reference for how I can submit to you. Because mm-hmm. if I can't submit to him, I can't, I don't know how to do that in other places. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just as like Jesus' sacrifice for me, like I sacrifice for my family. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's, it says in, states in scripture, how um, like Jesus in the church is like a husband and his mm-hmm. bride, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And the things that Jesus did for the church is the same thing that a husband does for his family and his mm-hmm. wife. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but you need the reference point. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In order to do your best to try to replicate it. Yeah. And on top of that, you have him walking side by side with you. Yeah. You know and the saying? Holy Spirit leading and guiding in all truth. Yeah. He set us up very nicely. Yo. <laughs> it's a, and it's crazy. The alley oops are crazy. It's an invitation. It's really an invitation. Like um, in the parable when he was saying like how uh, I've set I've set up this feast. Like go out into the highways. Mm-hmm. Or and this was after he had like knocked on the doors and told the people that like hey I got this this situation for us. Like come through. And one person was like oh, I can't go. I got to do this. Uh, and he was like yo. Somebody about to eat this food. Go out onto the highways and go find them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's just, do you accept the invitation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes the invitation, because of whatever's in front of you, whether that be like temptation to be mad, mm-hmm. temptation to be right, mm-hmm. temptation to like stay disconnected because they don't deserve it anyway, kind of a vibe. Like, yeah. like whatever is set before you sometimes can be the distraction to the invitation and what is actually for you. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. so... Again, we've only been married for four years, and I do believe that the Lord has blessed us with a lot of wisdom through counsel, mm-hmm. you know, like through People that actual have therapy. People far before us. Yeah, actual therapy, our parents, our pastors, our community, like, um, and we're just here to say that it works. Mm-hmm. Like, doing it his way. And he's so vast, that, that could mean different things. We both are entrepreneurs, like we, mm-hmm. we not everybody has to do that, you know, not mm-hmm. everybody has to be a musician. Mm-hmm. We're more talking about the obedience, the posture of the heart, like how do you love well, love mm-hmm. is patient, love is mm-hmm. kind, love doesn't keep a record of wrong, mm-hmm. you know, like those things, that is what, where you get to bearing fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we've also seen like our marriage directly impacts our kids. Yeah. And like when we're good, he's better mm-hmm. when we're off by the grace of God. It's not like he's in a horrible situation, yeah. but at the same time, he, um, his growth could be stunted by our arrogance. Mm-hmm. If we just don't do what we're supposed to do and mm-hmm. walk in our purpose. Our so, pride. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, the, I, like you were saying, marriage being the example of Christ in the church, mm-hmm. it, we feel a responsibility to reflect that rightly. Mm-hmm. Um, and not on like Le- an exterior, like for y'all. Facts is not like. It's like for us, <laughs> it's for you know? Us. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, literally. Yeah. And like by the grace of God, he has allowed it to be shown in a public space, but the why will never be to perform nah. or to show it off. The mm-hmm. why is always like, are we right with God and mm-hmm. are we right with each other? Facts. And if that is true, then let everything else happen from that place. Mm-hmm. Because we've also experienced hard times where we were right with God, but not right with each other. Mm-hmm. Or felt like we were right with each other, but not necessarily right with God, which mm-hmm. means we weren't right with each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we've experienced it. I don't, I don't want to say all, because again, we're four mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. But we, we've experienced a lot of life in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And we've been able to say, when we submit, it's better. Yeah. When we learn, when we use the tools we've been given. Because nobody's giving us tools that weren't written. Like, lo- knowing how to talk to each other is not something God was like, dang, I didn't even think about that, but that's good. There's nothing new under the sun. No. Um, this is how you, like, w- walk in love, walk in patience. Mm-hmm. If somebody's like, I love you, there's a whole, I think, 13 verses about what that is. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, there's no greater love than this. Mm-hmm. Laying down your yourself or a friend, you mm-hmm. know? 
what does that look like in marriage? Yeah. You know, like there's, it's, and, and that's something that we're still learning. Yeah. I, I pray four years from now, we kind of watch this podcast back and be like, we didn't even know half of it. Facts. Because that means that we, we're, we're growing. Growing, yeah. And we're doing what it takes to be more intimate with God and more intimate with each other. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I don't look at, at that like, uh, Oh, like it's a weakness of ours right now. Like we don't know anything yeah. or that's bad that you don't know at all. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hopefully I'll always will be in the place of a student. Fact. Even in our marriage, if when we're married for 55 years. I'm a beginner. It's like always. absolutely life in God through life teaches you and you gain more wisdom. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we never will know it all. Nah. So that's that's our posture now. But that's, but that's the childlike posture. Yeah. It's just like. Always got an open hand. Mm-hmm. Do you see? I'm trying to think of like people who do that really well. I feel like Pastor Lyle does that really well. Yeah, he's all, and I'll never forget one of the services that um, I went to when we were dating in long distance, and I came out. He said there was like a sermon about forever being a beginner. Mm. And that stuck with me to this day. And it's it's such a powerful sentiment mm-hmm. because on one side, it always is positioning you to learn something new. Mm-hmm. On the other side, it's posturing you to humble yourself yeah. and to remain humble. And I, I really do think there's this beautiful relationship between... Hum, being humble and learning. Yeah. Because I don't believe you can truly learn something without being humble. Mm-hmm. Because as you start to learn something, if you think you know it all, you will prevent you yourself from yeah. <laughs> learning the thing that you're trying to learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, I've been, yeah, yeah. And it's like. Half the sentence. Oh, yeah, I got it. And got it's it. like, yeah, you may know this part, but all of this right here, you just dismissed. And so, so many lessons build on each other. It's math. Yeah. It's really math. I've done, I'll tell a quick story. <laughs> I took a statistics class in college. The first week I showed up, I was like, this stuff is super easy. I'll see y'all at the midterm. I went the week before the midterm and your you boy. You skipped every class before. Oh, the yeah. Because I was like, oh, yeah, I'll see y'all in five weeks. Showed up the class before the midterm and your boy was sweating. Bullets. Did you like fail? No, I made it. That's crazy. <laughs> I can never have. I would never in my life. But ooh wee, that was your boy was stressed. That is a really good example of like. But that's arrogance. Me being like, I not, I got this. It is, I mean? and it's grace. Yeah. That's but grace. I think sometimes, and we don't have to go into this long, but sometimes when the Lord graces us in situations we take that as like, see, I never had to go to class anyway. Yeah. You know? And there have been times, I think in our marriage for Mm -hmm. me, when Tavier's patience and Tavier's love for me and Tavier's like lack of accusation has made me feel like it couldn't have been that bad. (laughs) 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 He's obviously fine, you know, like, and it, and it takes me time. Like something for me is like learning to submit um, when I'm a hyper independent person. Like, I, I don't, like, I, I just don't really need much from a lot of people because mm-hmm. um, I can figure it out on my own. And in marriage, obviously, mm-hmm. that's not beneficial. Mm-hmm. But Tabe let me figure it out. And for a long time, because I passed the, the class, mm-hmm. I was sweating, but I passed my um, what's the word I'm looking for? Credit was given to myself, not to God. Mm. So it wasn't like, man, Lord, by the grace of God, well, mm. by the grace of you, I, <laughs> I made it. Show me what I should have learned in these last five weeks. Mm. It was like, well, I made it. So, mm-hmm. and then because you didn't actually learn the real lesson, you just got the information. Mm-hmm. You're back in the same situation of like, how are we still talking about this? Like, I thought it was fine. Yeah. And it's like, no, because you skipped the lesson, mm-hmm. not just... You got the answers right, Mm -hmm. but you still don't know the information, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and, but that prevents, like you're saying, deeper connection with your spouse Mm -hmm. and getting somewhere Mm -hmm. because you, you will circle the same lesson 
until you get it. Like, God is so patient. You're not going to skip no classes in the no. spirit. You cannot. You will not. And for us, it, that meant the same fight. Yeah. Until one, until we both were able to go, okay, God, what is it that we need to learn here? Mm-hmm. Not, it's not me. I yeah. know I, that, that is you, Facts. you know. I don't, like, <laughs> even if a situation was on you or me, mm-hmm. I don't think there's ever a time where either of us, the other person is just like scot-free. No. You know what I'm saying? We're both here (laughs) living, yeah. There's still something going on with you that needs to be addressed. You know what I mean? Even if, I was just talking to Janae about this, Mm -hmm. even if it's learning how to be right the right way. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of my issue was I could be right and then wrong because the way that I was right was wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, technically, this ain't ain't got nothing to do with me. Arrogance. Uh Yeah. Not grace for my spouse and, hey, what can I do to help you? I feel like the the other night I I did pretty well. You did. Incredible. Thanks. But that's after, again, the four years Mm -hmm. of doing it like, not me. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, it's true. Like, maybe the issue wasn't you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're actually not the one who's seeing things wrong. Mm -hmm. And then what? Yeah. You still have responsibility yeah. to love well, including patient, including not keeping a record of wrong mm-hmm. of like, we're always here because you just won't act, yeah. you just deal with your stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's my, my biggest flaw, sin nature, if you will, is pride. Mm-hmm. And that, and winning the argument, you can still be wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and even not even winning an argument, but just like, being on a high horse in your heart and mm-hmm. being like, it's not me, mm-hmm. still not me. Like we we back here again, but not because of my stuff. Mm-hmm. That may be true, mm-hmm. but this stuff, <laughs> <laughs> this stuff ain't cute. <laughs> what about this stuff? Yeah. You know, you may not be here because of your stuff, uh-huh. but this this here is revealing your stuff mm. that you need to work on. That's a fact. So, again, like. That is it's a process. That is the sanctification of the Lord. Yeah. And that is the grace of God over our lives to say, <sighs> I'm not going to leave you where you are. Yeah. And so, and we want to have it like a quick fix and be like, oh, because I'm saved, I'm good. And it's like, no, your spirit is back connected with God and mm-hmm. it's perfect. But that soul and flesh in your body, mm-hmm. the mind, will, and emotions, the habits you've created, like mm-hmm. that from glory to glory, he redeems that. Yeah. It's going to get pruned. Yeah. You, and you're going to get chastised. Because of that love, and that's that's uh, an explicit indicator that you are loved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I'm I'm so happy that we spoke more about like it's just Jesus, and it's like yeah, but like what like what is happening? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, and it's a lot that. of work behind the scenes. Thankfully, again. It's true when it says, take my yoke, for it's easy and it's light. Mm -hmm. When we do it God's way, is it emotional? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it lighter than when we try to do it our way? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. He didn't say it's non-existent. He didn't say, take my yoke, because then it's not a yoke, so, you know. Yeah. He said, it's light. Mm -hmm. So when I pick something up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can carry this, Mm -hmm. versus something so heavy that's like, I only have about 10 minutes, okay, and then I'm about to be tired. Mm -hmm. Like, there's longevity in when you do things God's way Mm -hmm. because you can handle it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's endorsed. Like, his hand rests on it. Mm -hmm. It's his, which, again, is, like, the bigger conversation of, like, or not necessarily conversation, but the bigger fact that, like, this isn't ours. Right. You know what I mean? Like, our bodies aren't ours. Our marriage is not ours. Nothing's ours. It's all his. Yeah. Um... So when, when that submittance happens, you kind of are back in your parents' house mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, I don't pay the light bill. Mm-hmm. I don't, but there's food in the fridge. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, the responsibility shifts yep. so long as I'm remaining in my father's house. Yeah. But the moment I think I'm grown and it's like, oh, you're grown? Okay, well, like, go do what grown folks do. Go, go get your own spot. Go, 
And you realize I cannot afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I realize very quickly I cannot afford that. <laughs> Yo. So what is it? And not in like a what's going to do to stay here, but like the gratitude, the perspective, yeah. like the the things that I'm grateful for now that my parents did for me <laughs> that I had no even awareness of Man. when I was living at home. Man. It changes everything. I'm mm. like, dang, mom and dad had five kids and we, we every Christmas was like this and mm. we had whatever, you know, I remember we had iPods. I'm like, how do they do that? Mm-hmm. That's not something I was thinking about when I got the iPod. I was like, thank you, I asked. Yeah. <laughs> I asked for this. I was hoping this was... <laughs> and I think when you do life, specifically mm-hmm. marriage, mm-hmm. You, and you realize the cost of it yeah. and like what it actually takes to be in a healthy, thriving, like beautiful relationship, and then you realize, I didn't pay that. Mm-mm. Like this, everything I'm doing, it's by the grace of God. Yeah. And like, he's the one who paid the cost so that he could just teach me the way. Not that so that I had to afford it, no. you know, myself. Mm-hmm. It makes me want to do better yeah. and want to love better mm-hmm. because I'm not paying for it, you mm-hmm. know, but my gratitude is set up in a way where I'm like, I didn't have to pay for this, but I do want to treat it well. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. this has been a gift. So mm-hmm. like my reflection I hope that my actions reflect my gratitude yeah. and not entitlement yeah. towards like whatever I didn't mm-hmm. you get on my nerves anyway. Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's an insult to the marriage, not just the person mm-hmm. because of the covenant that we have before God. Mm-hmm. Not just the commitment we have to each other. It's yeah, it's so, three it's three ways. Yeah. For sure. That's four years so far. Mm-hmm. And we could probably talk for another forty five minutes about conflict resolution or mm-hmm. praying together mm-hmm. or church, going to church, like h- him leading me back into church when I was like ready to throw it all away. Mm-hmm. Like there's been so many moments in our marriage that could have been the beginning of a, a disconnection mm-hmm. where the Lord has stepped in. Mm-hmm. And when we posture ourselves under that and under him, like the favor you have, like you just don't want to like, you don't want a life without the hand of God on it. Facts. I got a question. Yeah. When I remember, and I'm pretty, I will probably hovering around like 37 <laughs> minutes. Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, talking about like the going back to church mm-hmm. thing. Because it was weird, right? Like COVID, people weren't in church because of everything. And I remember me being like, uh... Oh, I'm going to go to church. Mm-hmm. Like, it's okay if you don't, like, come mm-hmm. or anything. But I'm going to still go. Mm-hmm. What What was going on in your head when you In that, that moment or? Yeah. Was it like? Gosh, we're in those or church. I, we're in the church phase. I'd rather just have him go. Or were you like, nah. Because you, you never just, like, had me go by myself. You know what I'm saying? I think because, like, I knew you were right. Mm. So... It was like an underhanded challenge and probably less by you and more so of the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. where there is like, what are you going to do? You know, like, so for context, I did, I still have my own struggles with Mm -hmm. going to church on Sundays, Mm -hmm. not necessarily the body of Christ church. And what is little C church? Yeah, little C church. But in that time, it was um, again on the heels of the um, a lot of opportunity for disconnection because of the COVID year that everybody experienced. Mm-hmm. So Tay was like, we could go back, you know, and we, we spent some time, like we weren't like the first ones back in church by any means. Mm-mm. We would like sometimes watch online, sometimes like, just kick it. Y'all still coughing? All right. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> <seeing y'all. laughs> um, But his commitment to a local church is slash was way different than my commitment to a local Mm -hmm. church. So by the time he was feeling ready and like more safe physically to go back, he was like, yeah, let's go every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten used to chilling. So I was like, no. And by that time, when you're disconnected from something, it's so easy to believe your own narrative Mm -hmm. around the thing more so than when you're connected with it. And then there's more opinions and kind of perspectives. Mm -hmm. So because we had spent so much time disconnected, partly rightly because of the COVID Mm -hmm. time. And then the other part was just my own desire. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go back. And I had spent so much time away that I was convinced about my narrative. So I think he knew that, would you say? What? That I wasn't like necessarily, the reason I wasn't at church was probably more than COVID. Yeah. Yeah, he knew that. And so his 
again, this is what I'm talking about, patience. His patience in leading. And this is the, this is the arrogance I'm talking about, where I'm like, oh, I passed the test. You know what I mean? It's like, well, I went back. You know, technically mm-hmm. I did last week, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but Tave just said a statement. Mm. And it wasn't like, well, I'm going even with or without you. Like, yeah. it was just like, okay, do you want to go to church this week? And I'll be like, no, nah, I'm chilling. And he's like, okay, well, I think I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. But I'll, you know, I'll come home and then we'll do lunch or something. And mm-hmm. I was like, you're going to go. So, like, without me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to be in my dad's house. Yeah. I'm pulling up. And uh, I think it was, like, the conviction of the Holy Spirit that was, like, again, so what? So then what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. So I started going back. And we still fight about, fight is a big word. We still disagree. It's an ongoing conversation. Mm-hmm. But I do believe in or- the order mm-hmm. of that God has set our household in. So um, I, I don't go thinking like this is sin but because Tave said I gotta go mm-hmm. like it's not nothing like that but more so like how does God bless his people mm-hmm. um, and a lot of it is through order mm-hmm. and submission and so and even that word took me a long time <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know sorting through you just I like outside of personality wise you're um i don't know the, the proper term but you're you, i want to awesome say, yes absolutely amazing yeah you just i can't you're, think of it are, are there Nearly alpha perfect. are there alpha women um i sh- sure like i think for the sake leader. of the word yeah like you're just very you're a leader you're uh you're strong, independent. Um, well, babe, outside of marriage, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I lead almost everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not a ton. I can't think of one other than, like, maybe my parents, literally, mm-hmm. where I'm not in some leadership mm-hmm. role. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I was never used to just being led mm-hmm. other than by God. Mm-hmm. So if I was good with him, then I'm doing, you know. <laughs> doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't need y'all's approval. Yeah. So in marriage, I went in. And plus, you're like natural lean of like, I don't of course that. I'm amazing. Yeah. Like, you know it what I'm saying? It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so with you, mm-hmm. that like whole who's leading thing mm-hmm. was probably never, I never said that, mm-hmm. but I definitely acted like it. Like, mm-hmm. well, get on board. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> like, <laughs> We're nah, doing this. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> uh, so with the church thing, that was a very clear leadership move. Mm. Where I was like, I either continue to lead by myself mm-hmm. or I follow this man mm-hmm. who I have committed my life to. Mm-hmm. Who I know, like we're talking about church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know he's not trying to lead me to, you know, to hell. Yeah. So I'm like, I think there is, again, some ego in that. Mm-hmm. But ultimately... I knew what the Lord asked of me, mm-hmm. and that has been the, something that I even struggle with with God sometimes, because I'm like, you know I'm going to say yes. So, like, when we were praying about having triumph, mm-hmm. and I was not in a place where I was ready to do that, and God was like, hey, I'm asking this of you, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. you know I'm going to say yes. Mm-hmm. Like, this yes is not what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. That was a similar moment Mm -hmm. where God is like, what are you going to do? Are you going to follow him? Mm -hmm. Which you know is following me. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do your own thing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know I'm going to, you know I'm about to get in the shower. (laughs) (laughs) Get ready to go. Yeah, so I'm about to leave in like 35. (laughs) Um, So, but I mean, it was the right thing. Mm Again, I still wrestle. Like I'm not I'm not yeah. trying to like paint a picture like and so then we went to church and now everything's yeah. great. I still yeah. I still have so many questions about what is it that we're doing mm-hmm. for real. Mm-hmm. But I also have a lot of answers about who God is mm-hmm. and and doing before knowing. Mm-hmm. You know, faith is believing what you hope for, is certain what you cannot see. Sometimes like having that faith that this is what God is doing. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, he'll tell me. Mm-hmm. 
but I'm going to do this until he says something. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the harder position to take than, like, oh, yeah, that all makes sense to me. I agree with that. Let me do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been part of our marriage, too, of just, yeah. like, you want to do it? That's my life. Yeah. Like, I feel like since I got saved, that joint has just been the course. And, and I've been fortunate to that. That has not really been my experience. Mm -hmm. Faith, yes, but it's more like, okay, God, I'm doing this thing that you told me to do, and I also want to do it, and, like, I'm going to have faith that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Not like, what is it that we're doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you wanted me to do what? Yeah. You made so much sense to me. Mm -hmm. You You weren't like a, I don't know, I don't like this about him, I don't like this about him, but, you, God, you're saying this, so, yeah, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. My career made so much sense to me. Mm -hmm try was probably the biggest like mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. but I'll do it mm -hmm. um isn't it amazing how the things that don't make sense or the things that you didn't necessarily have in your crosshairs can be the things that are like how could I not have this right crazy I know but what made you ask that you were just curious you never asked me before what about the church thing oh I just thought it would just wanted to know what your play-by-play -play was. I have a question for you. Let's do it. I don't know what time your, we're your spidey sense says we're, we're at. We're at like 39 minutes. <laughs> that was yeah. way longer than two minutes. I know, I know, I know. What is it like leading me, like mm -hmm. a strong-willed woman? I love it. Do you? I, yeah, I do. Because, like, for me, it's... It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, It just shows how much I'm respected by you. To, that's mm -hmm. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Cause like I know who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. But you choosing mm -hmm. to be led is like that says a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, now like. This could be very bad <laughs> if you weren't submitted to the Holy Spirit. Okay, right. <laughs> um, because, like, okay, I've never been intimidated by... And tell me. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I've never been intimidated by strong women. Yeah. Like, I'm attracted to that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of men feel insecure by that. Mm -hmm. I can't identify with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not insecure like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, everyone's insecure. I'm not insecure about that. Right. <laughs> um, let me be clear. Let me be clear. I do have insecurities. <laughs> we all have them. Yeah. That's just not one of them. Yeah. Um, but I also do know why some men would shy away from that because it could be one of those things where it's just like, man... This feels like I'm stuck in the mud. Why is everything a tussle? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that will wear a man out. Mm -hmm. Like that that's one of the quickest ways to get a man down. Mm -hmm. Um But it's like it's like this. Like we're equals. Right. We're one. Mm -hmm. Like you're a helpmate of mine. Mm-hmm. Just as much as I am a helpmate of you. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe that a husband should do anything that he can to put his wife in a position to be as successful as she can be. And you do the same for me. Yeah. Um, but I will acknowledge that there are different roles. Absolutely. You're, you never are given the title helpmate, mm -hmm. biblically. Mm -hmm. um, head of the household. Yeah. Provider. Mm -hmm. By God, you know. Mm -hmm. So they are the same heart posture, mm -hmm. different functions. Right. In that, though, it's like it speaks about how could a man hate his own flesh. Right. So when I see you, I see myself, mm -hmm. which means that you are an extension of the head, mm -hmm. literally a part mm -hmm. of the body, mm -hmm. the neck, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. So, like, my best interest is your best interest. Mm -hmm. Because your best interest is my best interest. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and knowing that I am partnered with this strong person, I, I just duplicated myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now it's super lit mm -hmm. because 
I have two bodies doing this now yeah. instead of just one yeah. and so many more assets that I never even had access to or that I'm not naturally as gifted towards and mm -hmm. I'm influenced by you so heavily that it expands and enriches me as a man. Like I'm inspired by your communication skills. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they are too. Like I see them in the comments. Yeah, I'll be in the comment section. <laughs> Um, but no, you're a very prolific communicator and that rubs off on me. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Of course, you're welcome. And you know how sometimes I'd be speaking cryptically and throwing in Most times like, slang words what? that are only known by like three people yeah. and I expect everyone to know it. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily gonna change drastically, right. but it, I am taking inventory of that because your influence of how effective of a communicator you are, coupled with the influence of that mm -hmm. and the connections you can make doing that thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's an incredibly powerful thing. Our words are the most powerful tools that we have. Mm -hmm. um, we were watching, what's that movie with Ashton Kutcher and Kevin Costner? The Guardian. The Guardian, crazy movie. Mm -hmm. They're like Coast Guards and stuff, hopping out in the water in the ocean. But I was just looking at the helicopter flying and I was like, dang, like, Humans made that to fly over the ocean. And I was just kind of in awe of the licensing that God gave to us mm -hmm. to just create. To create, yeah. And being made in his likeliness and image, mm -hmm. knowing that the very fabric of the whole entire universe or creation of this realm sprang forth from his words inspires me to become masterful with mine. Yeah. And in scripture, it talks about how life and death is in the power of the tongue and how from the heart, the oh. mouth overflows. Yeah. And I believe that your heart and your lips are so connected mm. and the way in which you communicate with people your heart springs forth on them. Mm -hmm. And in that connection, you are also building things mm. in people and around people. Mm. And that's what the world needs. Mm. Um, so having that as a wife <laughs> <laughs> every day, having that as the mother of, you know, our family, mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Dang, Tave. That's so sweet. You're welcome, babe. I love you. I love you, too. This has been another episode of the Momori Podcast. We, we have sing? somewhere to be. We got, we got some things to do. Uh, thanks for being All with us. All this affirmation is really uh, <laughs> taking us to another spot. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Bye.